Okay, this is uh, Cohalen's Adventures interviewing Mike Randall of the Love Band. And how, how are you doing? Um, how long have you been part of Love? The first show that we, like Baby Lemonade, played as Love and Arthur, uh, June 2nd, 1993. So this June will be 30 years. Wow. So somebody posted earlier today that Johnny Eccles was the only geezer in the band. I said, geezer is kind of relative these days because you guys were backing. So uh, I've been doing this, well, I'm 56 years old. So I've been doing this longer than I've not been doing it. Nice. Now, before joining with Arthur Lee, maybe Lemonade existed as its own group. How only, long was that? Only four weeks. We started Baby Lemonade. Um, Rusty, Dave Green, and I, and then we added Henry Lou originally at the end of the summer of 1992. And then we played our first show um, just after the new year in 1993. And then we got the opening slot in April of 1993, opening for Arthur. And his band at the time had um, uh, Justino on drums and Robert Roselle on bass and uh, Melvin Whittington on guitar. I was at the Troubadour. And that was like April 29th. And um, we opened up that show. And then like the next day, Arthur, Arthur's manager at the time, our booking agent, called us and uh, I said, Arthur really liked Baby Lemonade. He wants to know if you guys want to get together and jam and see what happens. Next thing you know, we're playing at Raji's June 2nd as well. Wow. And the rest is history, as they say. Now, how long did it take to learn the, the catalog or what you were going to do for the set? We sentence? were already fans. So when we played at uh, the Tribunal and opened up on, on the 29th of April, we already knew like five songs. So Arthur had a guy call. We already knew like Orange Skies and Seven Seven Is and Signs You See and a couple other songs, maybe Orange Skies. And because Rusty would sing them. And uh, so when Arthur came over, he, he expected us to do like one or two songs, but we knew like five songs. And. Sold. He, yeah, he was sold. He did though look around the whole studio because he thought maybe we were bootlegging the, the rehearsal. But. You know, it was just one of those things, man. And we didn't have time to rehearse. We didn't have time to, like, it was the next day, you know? So we just had to, like, wing it. And then you were with him until his passing, right? We were with him until he no longer performed live anymore. So our last show at Arthur was in San Francisco in June 2006. And he passed, like, a, like a year later. And he, he moved to Memphis at the end of that year. And I think at the beginning of 2006, he wanted to try and do a band in Memphis. And he took some promotional pictures, but I don't think he was well enough to, uh, to do anything. I don't think he ever did anything. Yeah. I don't know either. Now, when did Johnny come in? Johnny came in, he first played with us in UCLA at West Hall. We did Forever Change, one of the first Forever Changes shows in the USA. And that was like, um, 2003. Okay, so before Arthur passed. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, so then, was Arth were Arthur and Johnny both together at yeah. one point? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. As a matter of fact, in 2003, 2003, 2004, 2005, we toured Arthur and Johnny and uh, all over the USA and Europe and the UK. And um, so yeah, Johnny became, you know, they remember the group. Back into the group, you know. Very cool. For me, uh, seven seven ends. I always loved the single, mm -hmm. but I was always kind of like, man, I just wish right after the thunderclap it would go further because that blues was such a cool group. And when I saw you guys, it was just like, thank you, God. Yes, we do it the way Johnny said they would do it in clubs. So we actually, there's no fade out. We just let it go. Yeah. Sometimes you let it go a long time, man. If he's feeling it, man. Yeah, because yeah. that, that's one of the best parts of that, that mm -hmm. little song. I mean, this, the songwriting, like, uh, one of my other favorites is um, with the people of the times between Clark and Hillsdale, yeah. just the, the way that this, 
the verse ends and the next verse begins with the answer to the word that's missing. Yes. It's great. I didn't know that. Our bass player, James Nolte, he just told me that the other day. Wow. I never knew that. Well, it, that's what... I was a creative writing major, so literature, so when, when that kind of thing happens, but there's like a couple of verses where it just goes to the next line. But the basic setup is that save that last word and that begins the next yes. phrase, which is just so brilliant. Uh, yes. And just, and also you set the scene is deeper than it sounds like, uh, man, I just, it gave me chills when I hear the end part of that. It's like, yeah, that's that's truth. The time that I've been given is such a little time. Yeah. The things I uh, must do consist of more than style. Yeah. yeah. And with the passing of Jeff Beck and David Crosby recently, that's even more poignant. Man, I'll tell you. I mean, I'm am definitely a fan of David Crosby. I'm a really big fan of Jeff Beck, and that was that was shocking. You know, I always tell people, you can listen to anything, you can check anything out. Find him doing um, um, that Beatles song. Day in the Life? Day in the Life. Yeah. If, you, if you listen to that, you watch it live. Typically, you got to watch it. If you don't weep, you don't have a heart. Well, for me, off the, the guitar shop, where were you? Yeah. Just, it's like, it's beautiful, but it's also technically, how does he do that? Just amazing stuff. I, I pictured uh, when I was in Santa Cruz, there was a guy named Rob Scribner, who was his uh, saw player. Mm -hmm. And I imagined that he could have played that mm -hmm. because he could get sounds out of that saw yeah. that Jeff Beck was getting out of the guitar. Just amazing stuff. But I saw you guys at the Echo with full orchestra. Well, you had a chamber string quartet. Yeah and a trumpet player, yeah. and it just added so much because you were doing the Forever Changes album, and it just... It was, that was great, and that two of those musicians, um, Heather Lockie on viola, and Paula Yu on uh, violin, they're two, they're two musicians that played with us with our heart, and toured with us with our heart. So, we've been playing with them for like over 20 years. And then they found the other musicians, which is great. Um, and then our trumpet player, uh, his name is David Costello. He's fantastic. Yeah. He's going to be playing with the next time we play in LA. We're playing, um, it's not announced yet, we're playing April 22nd at the Knitting Factory, which is the old federal building. In Long Beach? No, in um, Novo. In Novo. Novo. Okay, yes. so it's now called the Knitting Factory? It's now called the Knitting Factory. Oh, okay. Yeah, new, I guess, ownership. New sound system, lights, whole new place. Wow. Yes, April 27th. Still upstairs? Still upstairs. Oh. And uh, that's going to be with, uh, with our keyboard player, Willie Aaron, and with David, hopefully with David Costello. I haven't asked him yet, so yeah. maybe I'll send him this video. Well, <laughs> sneak preview, folks. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. It's our secret. Well, they can now send him. Okay. Well, very cool. Um, how long have you been playing? And the lead guitar trade-offs, how do you guys arrange? Who we does what? Johnny and I wing it every night. Every time we play, it's something different. Um, well, you, you got to pick the guitar you're going to play for the song, then. So you've exactly. got a 12-string or a, a strata. Exactly. But the hardest, most challenging part is when we do Barking Hill Dell. But Johnny, all Johnny has to do really is do what he did on the record, which he does. And I have to pick and choose which horn part I'm going to do, because it's more than one horn. Right. And so I try not to think about it. I just try to go with the flow, and it works out. It's fine. Yeah. And when the crowd are on the angel, it makes it even better. You know, what makes doing love so attractive to you guys? We love it, man. It's, we, you know, those records are, are the, the, the first three records, and we have four sales, particularly the first three records. And, they'll, they'll, and the musicians that play in those records are just like, it's like, going to, it's like going to college, studying those records and studying what they did. Those players, all of them, Michael Stewart, Snoopy, um, Brian Blankenstein, everybody deserves credit 
we're creatively coming up with really cool parts to match what Arthur views, you know? And it's really the, the people that love the music that are so supportive and, and they bring more people in the generation. So in the 30 years I've been doing this, there's been couples that were pregnant at the very beginning. Those kids are bringing their kids now. Yeah. How cool. So, Generational. You know? So it's like, wow, I'm, I'm tied into this and I enjoy, I, I enjoy it. It doesn't feel like a chore at all. And everyone in the band, I love working with everyone in the band. Our, our team in the UK are great. Everyone, our agent here in the California that we work with. All the venues, like Eric here at the Lake there. We work with the same people because they're just good people. And it's like, when you work with good people, just keep working with them. You know? Yeah. The, um, uh, there's so many questions going on. Um, I caught on to you around just, I saw you at the Federal Building, I think 2018. Um, it was an afternoon show. And just before that had been Johnny's birthday, and he had a little thing in Long Beach with um, Shuggy Otis's brother. Okay. It was a little birthday party. I recorded some of that. But um, that was the first time, and I hadn't known that you guys had even been together still. And the audience, is that building? Because you guys, were, are you bigger in England or, or the UK than you are here? Oh, or absolutely. Is, okay. That was always the case with Arthur, too. Okay. So that's kind of like Sparks in a sense. They're big in, in Europe, but not so much. And we're actually bigger in San Francisco than we are in LA. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. you play what, the Masonic or something? Or? We go to San Francisco, we used to play the, um, the chapel. The chapel. The old church. Masonic chapel. Yeah. I mix those up. I hate to cut it. You got it. Gonna, I have to eat before I get on stage. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Mike. You got it, man. Thank Take you, care. Rick. Pleasure.